Guys, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. We are in a housing inventory crisis, a market inventory crisis. There's just not enough homes on the market to meet the demand of potential buyers. When the Fed increases rates, this is what happened. Buyers got knocked out of the market, okay? They did. Their borrowing power went down. The house that they were able to afford a year ago is no longer the house that they could afford today, and they're no longer looking, okay? But what it also did is knock potential sellers out of the market as well, and sellers could potentially be locked into an even better rate. Okay, so they have two choices. They have to sell the house that they have right now, and if they want to do something like downsize or relocate, X, Y, or Z, what's going to happen is their mortgage payment, if they are locked in at a good rate, their mortgage payment for a smaller house that they downsize into could potentially be more than what they are paying now for the current larger home that they're in, Uh, and that is what the problem is. So the Fed that keeps increasing or juggling, I would say these rates both up and down, it's really creating less inventory in the market. And I'm going to show you a graph here that shows we are down over 20% for new housing inventory. This is the largest deficit in over the last five years. Okay. We're down over 20%. And what happens is, and I'm in this market, okay, I'm a realtor selling homes and I'm representing buyers in this eastern Massachusetts around Boston market. And what I see happening is unbelievable. I'm writing offers on properties that statistically we think are going to sell for a certain amount above and or below the list price. Normally, it's substantially above the list price, right? When I'm putting my data and analysis together and providing that to a potential buyer, you know, of course, we're going based on some of the data. But what I see happening is that buyers are becoming frustrated just like the 2021 market, and they are really just firing offers from the hip. There is absolutely no data behind their offer, okay? And they are dangerous. These are dangerous buyers, all right? They may have a lot of cash. They are perhaps waiving their mortgage contingency or potential. Uh, potentially paying X amount of dollars over the appraised value because the appraisal is something you have to be considerate of. And we're getting outbid. My clients are getting outbid. And alternatively, I see this on the selling side too. You know, we're selling homes. I'm anticipating selling homes when I put it on the market at a certain price above fair market value, okay? All this is done on the back end of a listing. And then we're getting offers and I'm like, "I I don't know what's happening. I do know what's happening, and the reality is there's just not enough homes that are coming on the market to supply the amount of buyers that are currently out there. You only really need two people that want to buy the same house, the same product, whatever it is, to potentially get into a bidding war, and the reality is you don't know what another person is bidding on the house. That is something that people ask me all the time. Well, do you know what the winning offer was? Do you know uh, how many offers there were? Sometimes we can figure out how many offers there were. Sometimes we can figure out if the agent provides it, how many offers were above a certain price point, okay? And that is something that happened to one of my recent offers that was very valuable. And when I saw those numbers, I was absolutely shocked. I couldn't believe that there was... a this large group of people willing to pay $75,000 or more for this condo. And, you know, the more I look into this and the more data that I'm looking at on a daily basis, the reality is buyers are still entering the market. And what's happening is it is still pumping the prices up of a lot of these Boston neighborhoods. It's absolutely crazy. Now, inside of the city itself, yes, some places, some condos are struggling to sell, okay? It happens, right? If if you're in a price point, uh, your bedroom count, location, you know, sometimes places are still going to sit on the market. There is a little bit more condo inventory on the market as a whole, but certain neighborhoods are still low on inventory, all right? But more so in the suburbs, I mean, Jesus The suburbs is just absolutely crazy. On a week-by-week basis, my clients are getting outbid, and they are not getting outbid based on data or based on what people perceive 
things are going to sell for, right? They are getting outbid from struggling buyers that have gotten outbid, maybe even from last year. When I see 20, 25, or 30 offers on the same place, there's still too many buyers. If you're in a market and there's four, or you're looking in a market and there's four single family homes for sale, Lord knows that if one of those single family homes is overpriced, way overpriced, it potentially won't sell or it's going to sell for closer to fair market value. But if three of those four homes are accurately priced or slightly below fair market value, it's just mind boggling how quickly these places are selling. Now throw school district into this mix. All right. If you're looking for a place that has a very highly rated school district, and I will tell you what I tell my clients about school districts here. Sorry to segue into this, but ultimately a lot of clients are coming from all over the country Massachusetts as a whole in the education spectrum is substantially better than a lot of places in the United States. I'm sorry to say that. You could say whatever you want in the comments, but it is, okay? Massachusetts education is a big deal. So our okay schools are usually somewhat better than other parts of the country. They're perhaps best schools, all right? Our okay schools are very, very good. So those markets that, or I should say the markets that have just very, very high school ratings, they are just getting slammed, okay? If you're a seller in one of these markets and stuff, congratulations. I hope you're relocating to an area where, you know, school district is just not important to you or whatever, and the prices are just not as crazy as they are here. You'll make a lot of money. But if you're a buyer looking in one of these markets, I mean, it's tough. What we've been doing is going on public forums, reaching out to builders, seeing if there is any off-market opportunities for our clients, because right now they are just getting absolutely crushed by people in this market. So, you know, I made a video uh, a couple months ago that, that was like, is this 2021 again? And honestly, I would take 2021 over this market. I There was more inventory in 2021 than there is now. Yes, there was more buyers, but I feel like you know, I really feel like it was harder to get an offer accepted in this market than it was in 2021. Are you guys experiencing stuff like this? You know, let me know in the comments below. This was just a short rant, uh, you know, frustration video. Um, you know, it, it, it's very frustrating because it's 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 hard to explain to a client. Uh, and a lot of people that reach out to me, they're very, you know, a lot of them are engineers, they're really good with numbers, stuff like that. And it's really hard to uh, when I'm talking to one of my buyers that, you know, they want to put an educated offer together based on data, based on X, Y, and Z. And what I've been just telling them out the gate is like, we could do all of this stuff and you're going to have five or 10 people that hasn't done any of these things and that are just really just firing from the hip. Okay. That's what I see happening in this market. People are still desperate. Feds increased rates. People are not selling their homes but people still need a place to live. I'm going to say it for the people in the back. The Fed increased rates, but it didn't change the fact that people still need a place to live, okay? People need a place to live. Unless you absolutely have to sell, if you're locked in at a good rate, chances are you're going to stay put, okay? Because you know you don't want to get into this, uh, in my opinion, scary market that we're in. And I don't know. That that's all I wanted to say today. If 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 you're looking for a place, just be very very careful and educated uh because ultimately a lot of what is happening here is specific to certain neighborhoods that are very good school districts, but it's also happening to neighborhoods that are adjacent to those school districts as well. We're writing offers on adjacent neighborhoods that also have good school districts. So try to find you know, my opinion is if you're dead set on a uh, school district A or neighborhood A, throw B and C into the mix. I mean, you, you may have to or you may be waiting until Q4 uh, in order to find a place. So that's an option too. wait until Q4 of this year, or Q1 of next year. Of course, you're going to be paying the inflated prices uh, that buyers are paying now because those closings are going to affect future value. So hang tight in there. If you need anything at all, you know where I'm at. My information will be in the description below. Thanks, guys. Bye.